Hi, this is Bill Holton. I am a writer with Access World Magazine. I write a lot about technologies that can help the visually impaired, but sometimes there are just some low-tech items that can help as well. As a instructor, I'm sure you're aware that regaining the independence you had before sight loss is your main goal, or at least one of your main goals. And this can include everything from finding your right prescriptions, to shopping for yourself, to cooking for yourself. And in this presentation, we'll talk about cooking. We'll talk with Dale Campbell, who is the proprietor of Blind My Smart. It's a site that sells a lot of accessibility equipment, some high-tech, some low-tech. He's also the host of Cooking in the Dark. He himself is blind, so tips that he uses on his show and shares in his news list, as you'll hear, will offer a lot of help to sight-impaired cooks. I hope you enjoy this. Hi, this is Bill Holton. I'm a writer with Access World, and I'm speaking today with Dale Campbell, who is the proprietor of BlindMySmart.com and the uh, chief cook and bottle washer of Cooking in the Dark. Dale, tell us a little bit about that show. It's been on for, what, 15 years? Uh, longer than that, man. We started Cooking in the Dark back in 2003 with Phil Park. We used to sub in once a month on his Blind Handyman show. Cooking in the Dark is basically a teaching show. I mean, our main goal is to get the blind individual up in the kitchen and get them motivated to make something happen, good or bad. Boiling water, let's do it, you know? When I first lost my sight, I was, I was just blown away at the number of people who told me I couldn't cook and the kitchen was dangerous and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> well, you Let's know, you are totally happens, blind. So. And I'm guessing a lot of what you do is good for the partially sighted too. And so I guess Absolutely. we would say you are a, an expert in the accessible kitchen. And I, I think, think so. I mean, it's a, it's a lot of using the same, you know, I had to relearn. I knew how to cook as a sighted person and I had to relearn techniques and things to do as a blind person. I almost, I almost burnt my kitchen down frying bacon one day because I was tired of having it in the microwave. <laughs> but here we are now in one of the episodes of Cooking in the Dark. We do eggs and bacon. We make chicken cordon bleu. We do crock pot cooking. We do roasts. We cook in the talking toaster oven, the talking microwave. We, we just try to get people involved so that they can do basically any cooking method that they want, grilling, smoking, any of that. And as we do it, we try to teach and impress upon them the techniques that we're using. And that's where my co-host Cheryl comes in, because if she doesn't quite understand how I'm explaining something that I'm doing, she'll ask questions to better draw out the information so she herself, as well as all of our, our listeners, can understand what techniques that I'm using to, to make, the, make the meal. You can get it at blindmicemegamall.com. You can go to the archive page there. Uh, we do have a podcast available that you can download to a Victor stream, and that address is cookinginthedark.libson.com. And how many reading services are you on, do you know? Uh, last count, I think we were on about 23 or 24 across the nation. We're on ACB Radio Mainstream on the weekend. Uh, on Sundays, we play every three hours. I think we start saturday night around nine o'clock and then play until sunday night at nine o'clock we're on the canadian uh the national reading radio service up there i think the voice or something uh yeah we're, we're all over the place and around and you offer some other resources i think you have a a, a news list for your listeners yeah we do have a we do have a uh a cooking in the dark uh email list serve that has uh last count i think we had about six or seven hundred people on it and they're all over the all over the world sharing recipes so and a, tips. A, yeah, tips, recipes, helpful information. You know, hey, how do I do this? And my goodness, don't ask how to boil eggs. That was like, oh my gosh, there's ten thousand ways <laughs> to boil eggs. I guess now I'm getting all the responses. <laughs> so you also carry a lot of this stuff. Um, how about cookbooks, Braille cookbooks, large print? Yeah, in the in the Blind Mice Mega Mall, we have uh, several. Well, all of our merchants, all all of the different stores in that mall are owned by other visually impaired people, and we have Blind Bookstop, which has 
right now almost 300 different cookbooks that are available in Braille or a digital format where it's a text file that can be emailed to you. But from most specific things of just pecans or nuts or there's salads, there's crockpot books, of course, there's casseroles, there's all types, and including our own Cooking in the Dark cookbook that we got from all the list members on the Cooking in the Dark email list. They sent in their favorites their family traditionals, whatever, but they're all recipes that have been done by the blind. And there's over 180 recipes and it's a four volume set. I still go to that cookbook. We produced that cookbook in 2004 and it's still one of my go-to books. Okay. Mm, Grandma Bohannon's apple crisp, man. You can't beat it. <laughs> <laughs> now, it, it, somebody who's newly blind or newly partially sighted, I think one of the problems they're going to have is looking at that oven. Uh, they, I know there are a couple of replacements. Uh, I reviewed the talking toaster oven, which is basically uh, a large toaster oven that had a dial pad on it that would speech. And you also sell a talking microwave. Yes, we sell the talking microwave, the talking toaster oven. But the main thing, if, if you're a newly blinded person or, or losing your vision slowly and getting in the kitchen, to remember, just pay attention. You know, keep it safe. Keep yourself safe. Uh, there's accidents that happen in the kitchen all the time, but not only to blind cooks, to sighted cooks as well. You know, but, but the different appliances and some of the adaptive products that are out there are wonderful. Uh, at Blind My Smart, we have an array of everything you find in the baking and cooking department is items. Uh, it's full of items that I have tested and used myself. And well, if I find the item to be not really usable or more of a hassle, then we don't carry it. One item I've found useful are called halos. And what they are, they're tactile stickers. And you can get an overlay that will fit on your oven or microwave or dishwasher that will have like pointing an arrow for temperature up and an x for stop and an o for start and i'll put links to where you can buy those but um talking even for the partially sighted talking appliances and devices are very helpful i i know i have used the talking oven thermometers that you sell yeah the, the talking cooking thermometer is fantastic it's very simple to use and not only that, it can be used for more than just cooking because the, the company that makes it, uh, their original one went up to 243 degrees. And at that time, we had that and we had those old Braille thermometers that were marked in 50-degree increments. <laughs> well, that's not really that, that helpful, you know. So I worked with them, and uh, they came out with the new talking cooking thermometer that has a range from 57 degrees below zero to uh, – 547 degrees, something like that, 572 degrees. So you can use it not only for cooking, but you can use it for candy making. I use it. I'll take it and stick it in my refrigerator. And after a couple minutes, pull it out, turn it on, and it does the air temperature. So it'll tell me the air temperature of the, of the refrigerator. Cool. Same with the freezer. Very versatile unit. One lady uses it for her orchids to test the soil temperature. You know, pool temperature, bath water temperature, it's got so many uses. It's, it's a wonderful little gadget. And I know you also carry, and I think this is an important item for a lot of people on special diets, talking scales, food scales. Yeah, we have the Talking Vox kitchen scale. Um, and just FYI for any of you and entrepreneurs out there, we use it exclusively here at Blind Mice to ship out to weigh and ship our packages but it has an 11 pound capacity it has the tear feature so you can set a plate on the scale and it'll announce the weight of the plate but then you push the tear button and it removes the weight of the plate so when you put your chicken breast or your food item whatever you're wanting to weigh it only gives you the weight of that food i mean likewise you can put the plate on it first and then turn it on and it will calibrate itself to to zero weight uh, including the plate before you put your food, but it, it, it's a fantastic little scale. So you're using that for a lot of measuring, and I see you also have some Braille measuring cups. Now, are, are, do they also have the uh, any kind of large type on them for the measures, or how can you tell the part? They have they have embossed text uh, in in just you know with the imperial measurement. Uh, they also have the, have, it, have it in Braille printed on the handle it's molded into the cup they're made out of plastic these were actually developed by a chef that lost his eyesight and then he got it back 
So what I want to know is, where were you standing when you got it back? Man, I'm going to go stand there. <laughs> but he, he realized some of the limitations and what he needed as a blind chef in these measuring cups. They are, they're wonderful. Um, they have from a, an eighth cup all the way up to two cups. There's nine cups in the set. The cups from a half cup and larger all have rubber rings on the bottom. So they don't slip and slide around them on the countertop as well. Microwave, dishwasher safe. They're, they're a really great little set of cups. And I know I've had a problem sometimes measuring out like a teaspoon or a tablespoon. But you gave, gave me a great suggestion on that. Share that if you would. Yeah, for, for measuring out. Now, our old, our old embosser, I mean the old ambassador there, old Phil Parr, the creator, we called him. His tip was to he just he uses olive oil or used olive oil. I'm sorry, but he um, would chill it so it was gel like, so he could scoop it out with a regular measuring spoon. But another trick is is to visit your your local drugstore and ask them at the pharmacy for a syringe for giving babies medicine. And traditionally, those are in either a teaspoon or a tablespoon size. But they work wonderfully. Pull the plunger out to half a teaspoon or half a tablespoon and have it and put a mark on the plunger so you know when you pull it out to that point, that's a half or this is a quarter or three quarters. But those work great for, for measuring liquids in small quantities. Because I know that can be a real pain because I have tried pouring olive oil into a teaspoon and you can't really hold the teaspoon level. And, and speaking of pouring things, hot coffee into a cup or something like that, you have something that will help people with that. Sure. We've got the liquid level liquid level indicator so that as you pour it in, it's basically just a little device that has two little rods that hang over the edge of your cup. And once the liquid covers those two little rods, it creates a circuit and causes the buzzer to go off to tell you, stop pouring, I'm full. <laughs> <laughs> does that also help when you're kind of carrying that hot, hot cup of coffee to keep it level? That doesn't doesn't help that, yeah. Nor does it help when the rug's piled up in front of you and you trip over it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> or the door to your office is closed and somebody, you know, they didn't tell you they closed your door and you crash into it and spill coffee everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Now, I know a lot of people, when they decide they're going to cook, they think they're going to cut themselves. Um, I think you've got a, a knife that, that won't cut you. Yeah, we, there, it's, a, it's a nylon knife. Um, it's actually designed, it's a chef-style knife, um, and it's actually designed for cutting lettuce. If you cut lettuce with a metal knife, it's going to cause oxidation, which is a little orange discolorization around the edge of the, the lettuce where you've cut it. But this nylon knife eliminates that. But likewise, this nylon knife that has a serrated cutting bottom, uh, I've used it to cut ribs, roast, potatoes, carrots, celery, onions, tomatoes, cut all kinds of things. But because of the, its make, it's I, I've taken it and ran it across my hand on my arm, and I can't cut myself with it. Can you cut anything so besides lettuce? So it's great for somebody newly blind and learning how to cut again to handle a knife when you can use that, um, because it's just practice, 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 practice. That's what I tell people in cutting. I, I think a lot of low vision um, people w would benefit from a little quick lesson on proper knife technique. I think you kind of bend your fingers under. Well, what I do is I'll hold whatever the item is I'm cutting between my thumb and usually ring finger or pinky, or maybe even you know my middle finger, ring finger, and pinky, and my thumb, and then I put my forefinger on top and I put the stand it straight up and down so when I move the knife blade back it's touching my 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 nail now a lot of people I've heard a lot of techniques being taught are by bending your knuckle under and putting your knuckle out but I'm like man the knuckle's got skin and that cuts pretty doggone easily <laughs> the nail doesn't cut as easily but I will just I'll move the I'll move my finger back and move the blade of the knife to my finger make my slice move my finger back again to about the thickness of the cut I want and just keep on chopping, be it um, cheese or a zucchini or tomatoes or, you know, whatever I'm, whatever I'm wanting to cut. Um, you know, and then also on the other side, there's the mandolins that are fantastic for cutting. Any and, cook should have know, one of those. Yeah, oh my gosh. They are so wonderful. Explain um, what one is. They to cut uniform. You. They're fast. 
you know, you can keep your fingers out of the way because they don't they don't discriminate. They will take off a fingertip as well as a, a slice of onion or something. But basically, <laughs> it's a blade on on the horizontal axis, and you just kind of slide the food, and it slices as you slide. So all you got to do is make sure your right. hand stays above. <laughs> right, you've got you've got a flat platform with a blade on it, and the front platform you can adjust the depth, and it will drop down below the blade. And then when you slide your food along the platform. You know the bottom plat, the front, the, the front edge is in front of the blade. Of course, it's lower, so it just slices off. Put a plate underneath it, and and away you go. It's got a, they've got wonderful finger guards too, which definitely use. The professional model we sell has a finger guard that also has prongs on it if you're slicing long things. Um, I mean, I've taken zucchini bill and sliced them long ways, and then breaded them and, and oven fried them. So and that is a very safe delicious. technique for slicing if you can't without slicing without yes. sight. With, <laughs> but it, you also have some other I mean, you, devices. It, it takes practice. I mean, believe me, you can do it because I can I can slice pretty uniform now, but definitely not as uniform or as quick as I can using a using a mandolin. Uh huh. And and I think any b- blind cook would benefit from a food processor of some kind with a slicing and a grating blade because you know you do a lot of knuckle scratching with with grating. And yeah, yeah. Does and, that. and and again, the, the, depending on how much you're doing, um, I, I tend I, I used to use a food processor all the time, but I kind of started shying away from it unless I was doing a huge job, just because the cleanup of the food processor sometimes like grating cheese and such. Oh my gosh, the, the cleanup took longer than it would have to grate the cheese. I actually I use an old holder. salad shooter, which still works great. Okay. And you just pop it out and throw it in the dishwasher. Yeah, that's fantastic. I've actually got an attachment for my, um, for my, my mixer, you know, my stand mixer that grates. It's like uh, the drum grater almost on it. And I use that because it's quick to attach and it's so easy to clean up. So I think that the the trick is to just to keep your hands away from the sharp edges. <laughs> exactly. And again, find what technique works for you. I mean, uh, I've also got a tower grater, which is also called like a box grater. So it stands upright. It's got grating surfaces on four sides. And whatever you grate pretty much stays inside that. But I'll put that on a paper plate. And if I want to grate some cheese for salads or for having tacos or whatever, um, yeah, it, it, it works pretty quickly, you know, and, and that's the main thing with cooking is find what works for you. And there's so many different tools and things out there. And it's just like I was explaining to somebody that was a woodworker. I mean, you can build a house with a hammer and a handsaw, but it's a lot easier if you've got all these other tools, you know, I mean, <laughs> you can cook dinner with a knife and a spoon, but if you've got all this other stuff, it's so much easier. It makes the job a lot more appealing. So, so I think that, um, you know, cutting yourself is one fear that a lot of the uh, newly sighted and vision impaired people have. I think another one is the heat on the burners and in the, the burn. stoves. Yes. yes. And yes. I think Burning you have yourself. some gloves that will help with issue, that. Man. Yeah, man, we have, uh, I was looking for some good bakeware, some burn protection, you know, uh, baking mitts and such. And, uh, that we found the silicone. I tried those. They were a little stiff. And then I found these grips mitts. And they're made almost out of a wetsuit material, turned inside out, so the heat dissipates wherever you're touching them at. But they're so thin, Bill. They're so thin that you can ta- – I mean, I did a ham. Uh, I was smoking a whole ham for, for Thanksgiving. And I could feel the cloves. I could feel the pineapple rings through these mitts and gloves. Because that's a touching. that's a big issue. When you open that oven and something's cooking, you want to touch it, but you're going to burn yourself on the rack or the pan or the food itself. And, and this way, you can kind of or touch. the top of the oven, the side yeah. of the oven, whatever. Yeah, these mitts. We have the 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 grips line come in. They come in mitts, and they also come in gloves, um, depending on what you're wanting to use. But they protect you up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. They'll protect you down to 35 degrees below zero. So I've even got a pair of these hanging on my freezer. So when I'm digging through my chest freezer, I'm not all of a sudden pulling my hands up and blowing on them. Ooh, that's so cold, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but hot pads, trivets, all of that. Uh, the, other, the other thing that's great about these is they're non-flammable. They can be cleaned just by washing them off under the sink or throwing them in your dishwasher. If they're wet, they work and grip just as well as if they're dry. So you're not going to be slipping and dropping stuff, you know. Yeah, I had that if, if you're going to be a, a touch and feel cook, you're going to get the 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 pot the handles. You're going to get them messy and wet. 
especially yes. those big, heavy yes. cotton I mean, ones. You, like, you know, when, you don't want I'm to touch the chicken time, with those. Yeah, when I'm grilling, I'll just reach in and flip the stuff a lot of times with my hands. <laughs> with oh, the that's a on. great tip. But I think you have some you know, tongs instead, that help with that too, with flipping food. Oh yeah, we've got some um, tongs like that will. They're like a double turner spatula tong. It's a nice wide, almost four and a half inch wide by about three inch tall spatula. And the top part of the tong has a wire that curls around. That's also silicone coated, so that you can squeeze and gently flip different items these the double spatula tongs were actually for fish but they work great for everything i have uh some uh, silicone coated tongs you know steel tongs i have two pair of them that i keep in the utensil drawer right by my cooktop that i use all the time well it sounds like those spatula that spatula would solve a problem i have you know i got three hamburgers in the pan and i flip one and i'm not sure it quite turned over so i've got to touch it and then i burn my finger so I, right, you know, this right. would kind of tell you, yes, you've turned it over. See, now you need to listen to Cooking in the Dark because we have a tip for that, too. Keep a little bowl of water by your cooktop. <laughs> and whenever you have to reach in to touch your food, dip your finger in that water. Oh. And then you can touch the top of the food. Or if you accidentally miss the food and hit the skillet, you're, you'll hear a sizzle before you get burned. <laughs> you hear now, the you, sizzle before you feel it. Don't keep it there very long. <laughs> <laughs> It does. That water does create just a little bit of a barrier, a little safety barrier, you know, to, hey, help me. <laughs> now, when I reviewed the uh, talking oven, it, it came with a, um, a, a an oven rack puller that you could just kind of hook around. Yeah, you sell those away. just for regular ovens. Yeah, but that, that one that comes with the talking toaster oven is Y-shaped, and you have to be able to see both ends of it. Exactly. I didn't use it's it because of that. It's much easier just to grab a hot pad or something else. Um the, the, the oven push puller that we sell is basically like a um, just a, a, a yardstick, if you will, like a, a, a ruler that has a notch cut in the end of it so that you can reach in and grab your rack and pull it out. And then at the very edge of it, it has another notch that you can use to, to push the rack back in. Oh, okay. But, um, I mean, honestly, I usually just use my uh, hot pads. Mitts, yeah. Well, there are two other items I wanted to ask you about. They don't fit into any of these categories, but I think you have something that will tell you when the water's boiling. Yeah, the boil alert. What a cool little gadget. It's a little disc of tempered glass, about three inches in diameter, and it's um, concave on both sides. So as water starts to boil, the little air bubbles start forming on the bottom of the pot. And as they're released, they'll release up into that cavity, of the boil alert and cause it to rattle as it, that cavity gets full and they have to escape around the edge of it. So it kind of just gently lifts it and drops it. So it kind of rattles in the bottom of your You get pot. a rattle. Very cool little gadget. Yeah, I did not use mine the other night when I was trying to make some rice and the TV was a little loud. And by the time I got to it, most <laughs> of the water had boiled away. <laughs> Because <laughs> I couldn't good. look into the pot, you know. <laughs> and the other thing, I want, last thing I wanted to ask you about were the egg rings. They were are very handy when you, for I, I know, sighted cooks use them just to make a nice round egg for a McMuffin or something. But they also kind of help you know where that egg is to flip it. Yeah, the egg rings are kind of cool because, especially man, I love I love egg McMuffins, so I use them for that. Break an egg in there; it keeps the egg contained all nice and round. Um, some people will use them for um, pancakes also because it makes a nice uniform round pancake. But most of them, if you can find them, they're made out of silicone. Um, and it's usually about a three, three and a half inch ring. You just break your egg in the middle of it and let it start cooking. And after it cooks for a bit, you can flip it over and you've got a, a nice, perfect little egg. Yeah, if you don't want to do that, I've heard of people who just take a piece of bread, cut a hole in the middle of it throw some butter in the pan, throw the uh, bread on, and then crack the egg in the middle and just cook it there. Yep, yep, the old, the, old, um, the old nest egg, they call it. Yeah, you cut out the center of the, of the toast of the bread, toast it, and pop it in there, and then drop your egg in the middle of that, and then serve it up, and you've got toast and an egg right in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would advise anyone to tell their clients to catch cooking in the dark. And let me give uh, Dale a little promotion here where you can buy all of these items and a lot more. Keep up the good work, Dale. Yeah, we're trying, man. We're trying. Again, our goal is to get, you know, get everybody in. And it, it's so it's so reassuring when we hear from, uh, from, you know, people that listen to the show and thank us for it. Or, you know, one guy had lost his sight and he was losing touch with his, his girls, his teenage girls. And 
they would listen to the show and then they would go in and, and make the recipes that we did on the show. So it allowed him time to bond and, and stay in touch with his, with his kids, you know? And I'm like, man, that's, that's what our show is about teaching and, and trying to encourage people to get in and cook and um, independence. make it happen. Independence, independence, man, independence. That's what it's all about. Well, thank you for your time. Hi, this is Bill Holton again. I wanted to add a few thoughts to what I discussed with Dale. First of all, a lot of your clients have been cooking their whole lives, either with recipes or following directions on cans. And this may be the biggest issue for them right now, is reading the directions or reading the cookbooks. We've already talked about some of his cookbooks. Even though they were Braille cookbooks, they were available in digital form so that they could read them on their phone or on their computer. Another great source is a website called Directions For Me. This site includes most commercially available food products and it lists the ingredients, the nutrition information, and the cooking instructions, which can be very handy. There is also a way to buy a portable scanner to where you can just wave the scanner in front of the item and the computer will automatically call that item up with the instructions. In fact, there's never been a better time to eat healthy, even for those with vision issues, because grocery stores now are stocking a lot of prepared foods and salad mixes and such that just need to be heated or just minor preparation. And this can be a problem for a lot of people because they are using an oven or a microwave and it's kind of hard to tell exactly that you've got it set right. These, um, the halos that we mentioned will help with the direction of the temperature and such, but there are a lot of times when you just need some sighted help. And for this, I cannot emphasize any more than possible that people become familiar with an app called Be My Eyes. It's available for iPhone and Android, and this is just a life-changing application. There are hundreds of thousands of volunteers around the world who run Be My Eyes on their phone. And when a person with a vision impairment accesses it, they can use their phone's camera to show whatever they're doing to the volunteer. So I myself use it to like verify the temperature on the oven or if I want to set my dishwasher to a different cycle. And I have heard people even getting the uh, recipes off boxes. I know that sometimes I will buy like a prepared chicken breast with bacon and cheese in the middle of it. And it's not in the database. And I have had exceptional luck with having Be My Eyes volunteer help me get those instructions. And I do hope this has helped. Thank you. Bill Holton's address is Bill at B as in boy, H-O-L-T-O-N dot com.